Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Friday, everybody. There may not be a video tomorrow on Saturday, and if this is the case, there will be a makeup video on Sunday. Let's begin today's episode, though, with U.S.-China developments. Yesterday, Thursday, the U.S. Treasury Secretary gave her much-anticipated speech on China. In the speech, she warned that any effort to decouple from China would be disastrous and destabilizing for the rest of the world, and called for a healthy economic relationship. However, Yellen also defended Washington's right to protect national security interests through measures targeting China. Expressing, quote, "We will secure our national security interests and those of our allies and partners. We will clearly communicate to the PRC our concerns about its behavior, and we will not hesitate to defend our vital interests, even as our targeted actions may have economic impacts. They are motivated solely by our concerns about our security and values. Our goal is not to use these tools to gain competitive economic advantage." End quote. Then, a few moments later, Secretary Yellen once again stressed this point, saying, quote, "Let me be clear: these national security actions are not designed for us to gain a competitive economic advantage. Even though these policies may have economic impacts, they are driven by straightforward national security considerations." End quote. Still, some commentators are not quite sure how to interpret the speech. For example, quote. While I believe it was intended in part to be a bit of an olive branch, I found it to be confusing. But perhaps the PRC side will see it as somewhat conciliatory and clear the way for her to visit the PRC. But Bloomberg reported today that the long-rumored Biden administration executive order on investment curbs will drop publicly before the May 19th G7 meeting. End quote. In the Bloomberg report, which he is referring to, the outlet writes that the executive order will cover the fields of semiconductors, artificial intelligence, and quantum computing, focusing on investments where U.S. firms play an active role in management. That includes venture capital and private equity, as well as certain forms of technology transfer and joint ventures. Yellen has expressed that she does wish to visit China. And if she does, she would be the highest-ranking U.S. official to do so since Joe Biden took office. Yesterday, at a news conference at the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan, United States Trade Representative Catherine Tai made simple points to Yellen, expressing that the White House has been quote very clear that it is not an intention to decouple from China, end quote, and that U.S. trade sanctions against China quote are narrowly targeted. End quote. Meanwhile, also on Thursday, U.S. President Biden had phone conversations with both European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and French President Emmanuel Macron, both of whom, as we know, recently traveled to Beijing. This is also in the context of a current debate within the EU regarding the bloc's China policy. Which we will unpack more in the next video. The White House readout of the von der Leyen call expresses that the two leaders discussed her recent trip to Beijing and quote their shared commitment to upholding the rules-based international order, human rights, and fair trade practices. They referred to the importance of maintaining peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. End quote. Russia, Ukraine, and other matters were discussed too. In her tweet about the conversation. Von der Leyen listed the topic of Taiwan as the first matter discussed. Interestingly, the official readout from Paris on the Macron-Biden call made no direct mention of Taiwan, only saying that the two sides quote support international law, including freedom of navigation throughout the Indo-Pacific region. End quote. This is in contrast with the White House statement, which expressed the two leaders quote had reaffirmed the importance of maintaining peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. End quote. Now, finally, for the U.S. and China, Wednesday evening in the United States, Republican and Democratic members of the House China Committee participated in a tabletop war game exercise organized by the think tank Center for a New American Security. This is how U.S. media outlet Politico described the war game scenario: "Quote: It's 2027. Taiwan's leadership is considering declaring itself an independent country." Chinese paramount leader Xi Jinping, angered by the major shift, chooses to launch an invasion of the democratic, self-governing island to force unification. How will the United States respond? 
end quote. The lawmakers acted as National Security Council advisers, deciding the best military, diplomatic and economic courses to take against China in the scenario. Quote, we are well within the window of maximum danger for a Chinese Communist Party invasion of Taiwan. And yesterday's war game stressed the need to take action to deter CCP aggression and arm Taiwan to the teeth before any crisis begins. The business community is not taking the threat of a Taiwan crisis seriously enough, which verges on dereliction of fiduciary duty. End quote. Next up, the Chinese economy. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's episode of China Update, don't forget to hit that like button. Sharing and subscribing is a huge help as well. It's only me making these episodes every day. It's a lot of work, but your guys' support is a huge source of motivation. So thank you very much. As always, anyone who can go that extra mile and help keep the channel sustainable, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. There is also the super thanks function in YouTube itself. As always, thank you so much, everybody, for the ongoing support. Okay, Chinese car maker BYD Co Limited plans to build a positive electrode material factory in Chile to secure battery making materials at a discount from local suppliers. The electric car giant will invest 290 million US dollars to build the factory, which is expected to start operating by the end of 2025. Positive electrode material is one of the four key inputs for the production of power batteries. Chile is one of the world's top lithium producers, just behind Australia, accounting for 35.8% of the world's known lithium resources. BYD is a big player in the car battery game, last year unveiling a plan to invest over 4 billion US dollars in lithium and battery factory projects in Jiangxi province, eastern China. BYD, which surpassed Tesla in 2022 to become the world's largest electric vehicle maker, is also in the process of going global, and some investors are quite bullish on the company. According to Zhishang Securities, BYD's production capacity totaled just over 3 million units as of the end of 2022, and expects this to lift to over 4.3 million this year. The company has announced plans to build a factory in Thailand to start production next year to sell to the rapidly growing Southeast Asian markets. In September last year, BYD entered Norway, Denmark and Germany, and last month, March, the Chinese car maker entered the UK market. Next up for the Chinese economy, yesterday, Thursday, the People's Bank of China, China's central bank, published data which show that in the first quarter of this year, monthly average mortgage lending jumped nearly 50% to 590 billion yuan, 85.9 billion US dollars, quarter on quarter. This is off a low base. Despite this, however, the director of the Monetary Policy Department of the People's Bank of China at a regular press conference expressed that the increase was due to lower mortgage rates and, quote, shows a positive signal for the real estate market. End quote. Chinese analysts remain cautiously optimistic. Quote, the data added to evidence that the property market bottomed out after the government ramped up support for major developers and cities loosened curbs on home purchases. But property developers are still struggling. As of April 6th, among the 50 publicly traded Chinese real estate companies that released 2022 results, 24 firms recorded net income declines, while 16 reported losses. End quote. And speaking of Tsai Xin, four of their analysts in a special report this week warn that based on signals from this year's Canton Fair, China is facing a massive manufacturing exodus. Insiders speaking to the outlet's writers express that rather than buying finished goods, many foreign customers are increasingly shifting to ordering only components and assembling the parts in their home countries as a way to avoid tariffs. But it's not just because of tariffs, a wider trend or shift is underway. The Tyson analysts explain, quote, a shift to component purchase could indicate manufacturing is moving out of China, mostly to Southeast Asian countries, end quote. Adding that, according to industry insiders, assembly plants are on the rise there. But due to incomplete industrial chains, companies are still reliant on imports of many Chinese-made components. Nevertheless, this is further fueling concerns about China's manufacturing exodus, with the analyst writing, quote, which has been picking up pace over the past decade amid rising labor costs and three years of harsh COVID-19 controls that crippled production as well as logistics. 
With low labor costs and surging local demand, countries such as Vietnam and India are becoming two of the biggest beneficiaries of factories leaving China. End quote. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a wonderful Friday wherever you are. Have a great weekend. And I will either see you tomorrow or on Sunday.